those days, Mary arose and went with haste into Judah to stay with her aunt for three months. Those days being um, right after her parents found out she was pregnant. And I'm not saying for sure that she got kicked out of the house for being pregnant but not married while insisting that it was God's will, but she went with haste. It, that, that means something. It's almost like she couldn't stay where she was. I can't say for sure, but as somebody who has been thrown out of a house once or twice, I can tell you what it means to have to depart with haste. Personally, I don't think her folks believed her. We know that it's a miracle that Joseph did. It happened somewhere between Mary leaving for her aunt's house and the birth of our Lord. I might be the real reason that she stayed with Elizabeth those three months. It's almost like Joseph reached out to her and finally told her it was safe to come home. I don't think her parents believed her, and it's one of those details that usually gets swept under the rug when the story has to be told by children who are wearing bathrobes. But um, even before Christmas programs, the mother of God was always portrayed as being so serene. She always looks so content. Blessed is she among women, the mother of God. She's held in higher regard than any, blessed by God with shame and suffering and loss. What she faces now will only compound. Simeon warns her a sword will pierce through her own soul as she watches her firstborn son be crucified. But today, she comes stumbling into her aunt's house, ashamed and afraid and alone, in haste. And Elizabeth greets her in the hope of the Lord, not in the fears of the day, not in the names that she has been called. She speaks out loud the promises that Mary has heard once, but needs to hear again. (laughs) She confirms the angelic promises with a human voice. And that matters sometimes. We know the scriptures, but to actually hear them from somebody else for us, that's a gift. John the Baptist starts to dance in the womb. Mary starts to sing. It is one of the Old Testament hymns of longing women knit together by the Holy Spirit. It is the Magnificat. It is a hymn about what passes these days for fairness. The rich get no more, but the hungry are filled. The mighty are cast down, but the humiliated are lifting up. And that sounds good as long as you don't pay attention to who sings it. Because the serenity that you see in Mary, it's not like a secret knowledge of karma. It's not about what's fair. It doesn't follow the path of Hallmark movies that will end when everybody just gets just right what's there. This is a hymn about help for those suffering under the bondage of sin, the sins that we have committed, the sins that have been committed against us. Mary sings of hope in this situation in haste because God regards her. Even in her humiliation, he looks upon the humble estate of his servant. He regards her. He has regard for her. He sees it all, the things that she is called, the things that she'll endure. And she has mercy, or he has mercy on those who fear him. This is God entering creation to set things aright again. By putting himself into the hymn, he becomes the root of the great reversal. Jesus becomes the one who is brought down from his heavenly throne, robbed of all pride, cast out into a world that you would be brought in to salvation. He advents to suffer for Mary and for you. The hope of the Magnificat is not in fairness, but that God has regard for us. And here, here we find it. It is the cross of Christ, and it is for you. This is why Mary can sing. This is why John the Baptist can dance. Our Lord advents to save sinners. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.